Marva. I, uh, I work for uh, Grafana Labs. Uh, we make the Grafana visualization system, in case any one of you are familiar with that. Uh, but today I'm here to talk about uh, a project I've been doing on my spare time uh, since maybe half a year, more or less. Uh, it was actually Bastian and I who had the idea together that we kind of thought uh, there should be a, like an open source uh, community-driven alternative to, uh, to Meetup. And this was like bef before the whole debacle where they would start uh, charging, uh, charging from uh, attendees. Uh, we just thought there should be something uh, more, uh, more aligned with the, uh, the needs of the, of the community. And we also thought it makes sense uh, to make it open source. And so here we are. Um, I have basically uh, I have a prototype. It's not is not MVP level yet. Um, there's at least enough to there's at least something to show. And uh, so this is like basically this is basically my spare time rest project as I'm I'm doing Go uh, professionally uh, these days. And uh, it's only about like, it's like 50-50 Rust is, and, 50, and the rest JavaScript because uh, there's uh, like a big uh, front-end component. Uh, it's, uh, it's a single page uh, application. And um, uh, it's basically, it's basically uh, using uh, Postgres on the, um, as the database server. And uh, then on the back end, we, we use uh, a Rust web server framework called uh, Warp, which is based on, uh, which is on top of uh, Hyper, which is again on top of uh, Tokyo. Uh, I guess, how many of you are familiar with uh, the Tokyo async uh, framework? Yeah, a few of you. So t uh, Tokyo is basically like, a, it's like a, it's a non-standard runtime uh, for uh, for um, doing async uh, programming on uh, in Rust, and uh, Warp is basically kind of the framework I ended up um, liking the most of the uh, web of the web frameworks which are available uh, to Rust programmers. Uh, so basically, uh, to say something about Comingle itself, it's uh, the idea is to make an open source, uh, community-focused uh, platform for arranging developer, uh, let's say, gatherings. Um, I thought it would be a, a good idea, uh, personally, to kind of um, narrow the scope and focus on uh, meeting the needs of, uh, of developers instead of having the wide scope of Meetup, where you kind of like you're serving like the uh, all kinds of meetups. Uh, I, I kind of want to make something which is more uh, tailored to to the to um, the needs of uh, of us or my uh, let's say my community and our uh, social uh, our social gatherings. Um, so basically the basically the the app is uh, let's see I can show you the app itself so ba basically the app kind of works as a as a feed of a uh, uh, of um, uh, so-called meets, as I call them, um, which are um, uh, owned or arranged by, by groups, which are like uh, organizations. And uh, basically, um, those, who are, those who are members of meets uh, can arrange them. And uh, and anyone can basically uh, sign up and uh, and uh, uh, ask to, to um, ask to join a meet. Um, Lost the screen. Lost the screen, did they? Yeah, it's still compiling actually. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how to uh, reactivate Maybe the screen? Yeah. Plug it in and out again. I don't know. 
um, for 8,000. Yes, yes, that's uh, that is correct. Uh, let's see. I think maybe I, <laughs> I think I might lack like a login on this uh, computer uh, because I've mainly been working on my uh, desktop lately. Let's see. Okay, so the, the home page is empty so far. And so this I've made a, a profile page, uh, as you see, uh, where you can, uh, so you, you can see the, the activity of the, of the user. And you can see the, you can see the groups the, the user is part of. And I've uh, uh, added myself to this uh, commingle group, which, let's see. Oh yeah, I probably need to run the migrations. Let's see. Okay. Um. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Fingers crossed. Uh, the, uh, the JavaScript uh, frontend basically talks to the uh, backend over uh, REST. So it's not server-side rendering, you're just talking to the API? Yeah, exactly. There's no server-side yeah. rendering. Like, I, I haven't I haven't the time to do that. And Is that even a thing yet? Or I guess it's not that hard to do. Server-side rendering? I've with, with the REST backend? Uh, that's actually a good question. Uh, I have never thought, because I've done that with Node before. Uh, so I've never thought about, like, uh, uh, I haven't even done that with Node for some time because it's uh, it's like uh, time consuming, and uh, I I don't have much time to work on this project. So okay, let's try again. Okay, so this is the the profile page of the of the group, uh, which is uh, uh, able to make uh, great meets. And here we have a, a form uh, for um, add the, for uh, registering a meet. And I use uh, Google Maps to define the locations. So it, that works the same as uh, as uh, Meetup. And you see it's, it's, it's added, uh, it's embedded a Google map. And and we'll just add today's meetup. And Basically, this is like a this is like a markdown editor uh, with live uh, preview. And um, you might recognize it as actually actually the same editor as is in uh, Stack Overflow, because the the Stack Overflow uh, editor is uh, is open sourced. It's called uh, Forget what they call it, page down. I think it's called. Like I, I forked that years ago and uh, made my own, uh, made my own version of it. <clears throat> and basically, you can say who's uh, 
this hosting a meetup and currently there's just me as the sole member of the of the group and you can set a you can set a limit and there we there we added we added the meet and uh, it's a, it's a very simple, the UI is super simple so far. Basically, it's, it's what I've had the time to do. Uh, but as you see, there's at least uh, support for, uh, uh, for Google Maps in there. So you can, uh, so you can uh, uh, go, to, go to location in Google Maps. And uh, so that, and shall we see, there's, there's some functionality missing here, like there might be some stuff I didn't push, like, but not much. Um, and if you go back to the group profile, uh, you can see that it's, it's listed in like the feed of, uh, of meets, uh, which the group is, uh, is having. Um, I can also see me as, uh, as a member of, uh, of the group. So that's, this is kind of the thinking I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of drawing inspiration from, uh, for example, uh, GitHub and GitLab, uh, how, how those work. And uh, also drawing some, I'm also drawing some uh, in, uh, inspiration from uh, a previous project of my own, which is like a, a feed of events. Um, I thought we could, have, uh, we could have a look at some code. Um, I guess no one minds. <laughs> <coughs> So this is this is readable, right, to to the people in the back. Um, so basically, uh, this is uh, this is like the the um, main. This is the the uh, main. This is the main routine of the uh, of the application. So this is what uh, this is what uh, uh, gets invoked when you uh, when you run the application. And uh, uh, so we basically. We basically, um, let's say, initialize the, the web server here, and we also uh, we also re register the routes of the of the web server. Um, how many of you have written a web server before? Okay, like maybe not half the room. Uh, how many have written web servers in in Rust? Okay, not so many. <laughs> um, Warp is actually quite particular, uh, even for uh, for web frameworks. Like it's it's quite different from what I'm used to. Um, it seems to be designed around the the concept uh, of uh, filters. So like uh, actually every every round is uh, programmed uh, uh, through a composition of uh, of filters. Um, so for example. You see the the block I've highlighted. That's the that's the route for uh, getting the the JavaScript. So the, the JavaScript is served as a as a bundle, and uh, this the, this route it uh, uh, it defines the route for getting um, or for for getting the the bundle from the server. Uh, so it's basically uh, it's like a succession of filters. The, uh, the first filters uh, warp get it basically says it's uh, it, it has to be a get request, and the second uh, filter says it has to be the request has to have the path uh, slash bundle js, uh, and that and the third filter says that's the end of the path. Uh, there's only one component, and uh, the the fourth and last filter uh, says to serve the file uh, dist slash bundle uh, js. Um, and so it continues with uh, all the different uh, routes. And uh, this, this route is maybe more interesting. This basically, uh, this basically says uh, that uh, it it uh, it will match a, a post request, a post HTTP request to uh, slash API slash login uh, on the server, and it will uh, accept a 
a JSON, bob, uh, a JSON request. And it will take, uh, it will also take an instance of the database uh, client uh, or the database object, let's say. And when that, when that route is invoked, uh, it will execute uh, a function, an API function called uh, a post API login. And I thought we could have a look at that. So basically, this route it, it implements the, the login uh, to the uh, the login to the web application by the user. And uh, if a user logs in uh, successfully, um, the server will uh, respond with a, with an authentication cookie. Uh, and that's also kind of interesting because uh, Warp doesn't have support for uh, for authentication cookies. I actually had, I had to do that myself. Uh, so then I kind of I learned how to make uh, authentic uh, authentication cookies uh, myself. Like uh, pa in past projects, I've just used frameworks uh, to make uh, auth cookies. But here I could see how to do it, and I also also used. Um, I used like a fairly new technology called uh, Pasito, which is like an alternative alternative to JSON Web Tokens uh, for um, a, for uh, ensure, ensure for basically um, how do you say for ensuring the authentic, authenticity of uh, of, uh, of cookies to, to verify that they are sent by by the server. Um, so I think I think the I think the cookie implementation is pretty good, but I could probably use some more eyes. Um, so this this uh, function uh, post API sign up. Um, now we're, we're actually looking for post API login. So this this function post API login. It's it's a good example uh, of, uh, of of a warp uh, route handler. Um, the the first object it takes uh, is actually the the JSON payload. Uh, I mean, it's like the it's like the login form uh, sent via JSON. It gets uh, that gets decoded into uh, a so-called login uh, object. So login is uh, is a type I define in, in Rust. Um, so that basically uh, matches the the pay, the payload um, the serve the, the client will send uh, with a, with a login. And the second. Uh, the second parameter is the database uh, object, uh, which I've defined myself, and you can see. Can you cover the type? Would it be cool to actually see what the types are, or can you do that? Um, I couldn't make that work here, but I can. Is it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm using Vim, so it's like uh, it's not. I'm using Vim as the editor, so. Yeah, but the, okay. I use Vim too. Coke, yeah. Coke is really good. Coc with Rust Analyzer. Yeah, I actually use Rust Analyzer. It's like I use this thing called I think it's called Dioplete or something, and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why it's failing when it when it. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, it's like if it fails, it's very difficult to say you know why. Um, um, oh yeah, but this is also very uh, cool. Um, this is the this is the return signature of uh, of the function. And um, so basically, the the function is uh, Rust is enforcing that the function either has to succeed, uh, in which case it will return a reply, or or it has to fail, in which case it returns a, a rejection. So this is like uh, something which is super cool in in Rust that uh, basically the compiler uh, for forces you to have a success path or an error path. And so it's not like you might throw an exception, uh, like in JavaScript, for example. Uh, it's like uh, uh, errors are uh, return variants, you could say. It's like, uh, yeah, so like, so either you, uh, you um, follow the success path or you follow the, the error path. And, um, So can I ask how many of you are um, actively writing Rust, or how many have actually written Rust? May, okay, maybe half to, yeah, a bit more than half, half the room. Um, so for those of you not 
so familiar with Rust. The, uh, basically, this line is getting the uh, a, a user uh, corresponding to the login's username or email. So the login will either be by username or email. So we, we look in the database for uh, a user, which is either which either has this username or that uh, that email address, and then it's possible the user is not found. So basically, this uh, match uh, this match expression will uh, uh, basically do one thing if it finds the user and another if it does not find the user. So, so this is the this is the case where uh, the branch where the the user is found, and in that case, we are uh, verifying the, the password, uh, that it's uh, the same as what is stored uh, with the user. And uh, what I'm doing here is a bit nasty, like I'm basically, I'm basically crashing if, uh, if uh, the verification fails. But the reason is that I've not yet figured out how to return uh, errors properly with, with warp. It's like uh, it's like uh, I'm kind of working in a time pressure, and uh, warp is very new, so it's, it's a bit difficult to, tr to figure out how to do things properly. Um, so my thinking is that this is just a prototype, so uh, I don't care if it crashes uh, <laughs> on errors. It's okay. Uh, it's, it's better than spending a lot of time doing it uh, perfectly. Um, uh, even if it crashes the request or it crashes the entire server. It. Well, actually, the server continues. I think. I think the, the uh, I think the server is okay. Like, uh, it, it gives some nasty stack traces, but uh, it, it looks like it can continue. Um, and this is also interesting that basically this function it has to return either the okay variant. Uh, or the uh, or the er variant, and here it returns an uh, okay uh, because uh, the the password matched, and we log we're logging the user in. And in the case where the user is not authenticated, um, we, uh, we here we actually here I actually figured out how to return an uh, an, an error like an HTTP error. It's like this is like the rare case that I figured out how to do it. Um, so we're basically returning an HTTP response uh, unauthorized um, because the user was not uh, properly authenticated. And here we see the case where we could not find the user. And in that case, we do the same thing. Uh, we, re we return an HTTP response which says that uh, it's um, uh, an unauthorized request. Um, do I have much time left? Mm, yeah, five minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, okay. We could also have. We can also look at the database code. Uh, is that uh, is that interesting? The what database? Uh, the da the database code. So it's so it's basically um, it's basically accessing uh, Postgres uh, via an ORM called uh, Diesel. Um, personally, I would actually pre prefer new, not using an ORM. Like I would, pref I would want to use just write SQL directly. Um, but I could not. F I kind of wanted to have migrations, like SQL migrations, and I, I could not find like a separate migrations library. So, <laughs> uh, so I ended up using Diesel, uh, basically uh, mostly because it has migrations. Um, but I'm already having I'm already having some trouble defining uh, the queries via Diesel, so uh, I kind of want to uh, I want to kind of switch uh, soon, but but I have to find the time. Uh, so this is basically this is basically the database uh, abstraction uh, I am using. Uh, so it is. Uh, it is a user-defined type, and for to do to make that in Rust, you use the struct uh, keyword. And this is like an interesting feature of uh, uh, of Rust that uh, basically, in order to access the the database connection from several threads, uh, you uh, you have to use a mutex. Uh, 
which is like a thread syn synchronization primitive. And uh, uh, to also have, and also to be, think, think in order to pass the mutex around, you have to use uh, uh, what is called an uh, ARC, uh, which is like, uh, I think it's like uh, atomic uh, re reference counts, yeah. So it's basically like, a, it's kind of like a garbage collected object. It's, it's like basically you can, you can make copies of it. Uh, so you, you can pass it around as much as you like, and, and then it keeps a reference count, and when, when the count drops to zero, it gets deleted. So it's kind of like, uh, like a simple garbage collection. Um, and here is the implementation of the, of the database type. Um, so that is done differently from Java, for example, that you, you have the implementation uh, block uh, outside, of the, outside of the type definition or the type declaration. And so here, here we have a very simple method for looking up a user uh, by the user's uh, ID. And here we take, we, here we get the connection uh, by taking the, taking the lock. And and then we make a query uh, via the uh, the diesel uh, API. Uh, so you're uh, basically like uh, filtering records in the table, uh, having the uh, having the same ID. And uh, this is like an interesting syntax, like generic uh, syntax, where you uh, we call the load method uh, with user uh, as type parameters. You say that you want uh, you you want a user object uh, back. What is that acronym? Bar con thing. Oh yeah, that's beautiful syntax. It's like <laughs> um, basically uh, the star uh, means you dereference the the mutex because. Uh, I'm pretty sure the con variable is actually a mutex type here, so you have to dereference it uh, to get to get like the the connection contained by the mutex or locked guarded by the mutex, and and the ampersand is for uh, making it in, into a reference. So references are like a uh, key to memory management in 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 Rust. Like if if I did not pass uh, con as a reference. Uh, it would mean that the the receiving uh, the receiving method would actually consume uh, the con object. So that would mean that I could not use con object the con object again because now it would belong it would belong to someone else. So like I would have given so like by sending a reference I retain ownership. It means I'm not giving it away. Uh, I can use it again. Um, Yeah, and you see here, so this is this is basically an example of uh, um, of uh, be, a function being able to return either uh, some or none. So some means that you you f that's like uh, means you found means that you're returning something, and the none means you yeah you're not returning anything. So that basically corresponds to having null or undefined in JavaScript, for example, or a null in C++, but uh, in, in Rust you avoid that by instead having uh, the option, the option uh, in them. Uh, so like uh, wherever you can return uh, uh, like a, a null value, uh, you will return an option. So then the, the client or the, the, the caller has to deal with both the, the, the sum variant and then the non-variant. Um, so maybe we can close here. <laughs> we can go to questions. Yeah, sure. Um, Question. yeah. So first of all, thank you for the interesting talk. I saw you use the Google Maps grade uh, above, and this is the backend, right? So I'm not familiar with web development, well, but why? What do you need? What is Google Maps for used on the backend? It's actually my own. It's not a crate. It's oh. uh, it's a module I've written myself. Uh, I think it's just for it's just for generating uh, URLs. 
uh, because I'm using the so-called static map uh, API uh, of uh, Google Maps. So it, it just like gives uh, signed URLs to, to the client. Ah, okay. So it's just like a utility uh, module. Mm. Thank you. More questions? Don't be shy. Yeah. Thank you. Um, how does mixing um, futures and uh, well, sync connections through an art work like for example, Diesel, as far as I know, doesn't doesn't support async yet, mm -hmm. and you've wrapped the connection in a mutex in an arc. Mm -hmm. So the, the, does it spin off a thread when you make a connection and then resolve to a future uh, as a future finally, or how does it work? Mm. Maybe you've looked into that. I was like no, I actually have I actually haven't looked into that. Uh, not not really. It's like. Uh, uh, I, I don't think I can give a good answer to it because it's like uh, beyond what I've I've only concentrated on making it work. Yeah. And, uh, and missing like good documentation and how all yeah. of this async stuff works because yeah. I have no experience. I haven't looked that. closely enough into it. Like right. uh, yeah. I mean the function in question is not an async function, right? So it will be all synchronous. Oh. I <laughs> The when, he when he creates a re uh, when he resolves a request, uh, the request might be the request is but it access database right? Yeah. yeah so the the, re the, the re request handler is as asynchronous. That's yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, and that one makes the call to the, to the database, right? Like yeah. The so I, that's actually something I don't know, like how they interact. Like uh, I mean, you know, before I reach production, I have to be more serious about this first. <laughs> I just want to answer that, that Tokyo gives you as many threads as you have cores available by default and that database call over there will block one of those threads mm. that nobody else can go and do a request over that thread. The performance will be definitely great for the app of this caliber. If you mm -hmm. want to scale up, you go to asynchronous database grids. I wouldn't be so scared about sync mm. and async combination when you're still in the level of having a couple of requests right. yeah. only. And uh, with time, I'll probably <coughs> switch to another database uh, client in any case. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I think we also th have here in Prisma one you can try. It's called Voyant. <laughs> 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 you might have to tell me about this. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think someone behind you uh, wants it. So I can give different an different answer also, but this is not going to be Tokyo right now. So uh, I would say that uh, I'm maintainer of the Bastion again. <laughs> yeah, and uh, basically we have right now uh, in that project uh, adaptive thread pool and which basically in that scenarios uh, it can automatically grow uh, the threads mm. and uh, scale back to the point afterwards and growing is basically, basically based on the uh, pressure of the uh, blocking calls and uh, based on that, it exponentially grows. And after that, uh, after some time, if there is no blocking calls operating on it, it decays and joins all the threads back. So you can use something like that too. Mm -hmm. Couple of things in addition to the, your code style, and uh, maybe it will be really good input. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, there are people basically uh, didn't work on that. Maybe they are just newbies that they are just going to get in the rust. So um, first. Uh, it's going to be nice that if everybody ex exhaustively match the blocks, so all the matches should uh, at the end, if there is no other cases, use the exhaustive match. So do you see the none in there? That should be underscore uh, in most of the cases. This is a good, uh, how can I say, um, approach. Oh yeah. Uh, and the second thing, if you are going to cast i64 bit to a 32 bit, mm -hmm. use from, because why? Because you are going, uh, you might get a, the a most significant bit of 32, might be garbage, mm -hmm. because you are doing a direct cast. Mm -hmm. So uh, use front rate, which first uh, zero eyes, and then do the conversa conver conversion, uh, which is the case that is in this uh, connection, the reference that you showed us. Mm -hmm. In there, you are casting the uh, user ID from i64 to i32. Yes, that yep. one. R uh, and I should use a, a from method? Yeah, i64 column column from 
uh, and uh, basically convert it from there or I32 whatever you are going to converting basically like I32 from yeah uh, yeah so this is basically how uh, it's going to be really nice because otherwise if the, the most significant bits are basically uh, wrong mm. and then it's going to be crash at that point yeah and then basically whole database uh, going to stall at that point mm -hmm. probably connections are also going to leak because uh, probably arc is not going to drop i also think so i don't want to scare anyone anymore but yeah this might happen in some scenarios mm -hmm. uh, that is what i can say so far this is what i saw mm. not judging no, but it's really get, nice for yeah. people that it's actually going to start right yeah. now it's good uh, it's good input yeah it does find that. Okay, it, cool. It yeah. Use also for the Clippy. Let me uh, tell you something. Use pedantic at m as much as possible. The pedantic forces you to do, uh, forces you to remove most of the things. This is the good part of it. So uh, most of the times when I'm writing Rust code, I wrote a shell script, mm -hmm. does the formatting, does the Clippy with the pedantic checks, and then formatting back again. Mm. So yeah, yeah, I haven't got, going to I haven't got around to using Clippy yet, but that's like uh, uh, something I'm going to do for sure. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks.